Hello, everybody. Welcome to my daily five with stock charts. I am Jane Galena, also known as Airplane Jane. And you can find me pretty much everywhere. I'm always sharing my information, looking to help other traders, and especially helping to educate people all about the dark pools and how to trade around them. So you can reach me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, my website, Ticker Talker. And if you guys ever have any questions, you can reach out to me on my email at jane at cjanetrade.com. And if you want to learn more about the dark pools and how to trade around them, we see some amazing things. Like we saw 40 million shares on a stock. I'm not going to tell you which one because that would spoil it, right? But if you come over, you start to follow us, you start to learn the methods and how to profit around these crazy big prints and big trades from the really big guys, come and check us out at the training pit. So my first chart for today, is going to be silver, SLV. And I do have the hourly chart here with the volume overlaid. So you can see that we've really broken out from an area of resistance around that 1730 mark, which is right at our 50 simple moving average. So we've been, we broke out from it. We have a bit of a cup and handle here, even on the chart as well. And the main reason why I'm feeling bullish on silver right now goes back to the seasonality. Uh, I love equity clock. They do provide seasonality. Now this is going to be for silver trust for the past 13 years. On average, we do have a fairly strong July. And over there on the right, I've got the weeks and I've got the percentage under SLV. Now, that percentage is going to be the number of shares short, short volume average for each week. So what is a short volume? Well, if you have a pie, right, you have a whole circle for the volume for a day that's all reported to FINRA, and then you go ahead and you look at how many shares were traded long and how many shares were traded short. Well, that short volume would be the total number of shares that were traded short for that day. So this is going to be that weekly volume average. Now, when you look at it, you're saying, all right, that's way above 50%. That means people have been shorting this very heavily ever since May. So when we go back and we look at our chart right here, that started back in May, all the way here, people have had over 70% short volume on average. That means here we had 27% longs, 26% longs, 27%, 25, a little bit more in June, but overall people are being very stubborn. They are shorting it and it's much like Tesla when you have a large high short volume that continues week after week after week, it makes it primed for a short squeeze. And a short squeeze will happen when you have those shorts that are feeling the pressure to go ahead and cover. And then you have the longs that are also jumping in because we're breaking out above a resistance. And you have to figure out at what point are these longs, I mean, excuse me, at what point are these shorts going to feel the need to cover? Is it $18? Are we gonna go ahead and squeeze right on back up? Did they go ahead and pile in even more? So this one is definitely on watch for me for a bigger move to come with silver. Next one is GDX, much for the similar reason. We've broken out from a big resistance area here. It then flipped to be support. And now we've come out and we've broken above 37.50. We're just now testing it again from the upside. In fact, right as we're recording this, we're almost back up at 38. So for now, gold is in that same seasonality trend. Looking at it over the past 20 years, the gold futures tend to really have a nice surge up. And we can see right here with the short volume chart that, hey, they're being more stubborn with the miners on GDX. So that's why I prefer GDX is because I see that these shorts are keep building their position, right? Not all of them are necessarily covering. Again, we go back to first week of May, 
this is fairly high. When you see it above 50%, that means more people are shorting it than buying it. All right. In fact, I'm looking at the trading room I'm in and people are just talking about how GDX just bounced. So that's awesome. This week in particular is crucial. We are in the first week of earnings season, right? And most of the banks are going ahead and they're reporting this week. So XLF, we've had this upward high back in the middle of June, roughly. And now we're coming up and we're testing that 200 simple moving average. Again, this is an hourly chart and we pulled back. Are we gonna go ahead and break below 23, come down to see 2250, 22? come on down and pull back. We did have Wells Fargo just report today that they had to cancel their uh, dividends based on the bank assessment. JP Morgan did very well. That's pulling up XLF at the moment. In fact, XLF right now is at 23.64. So when we look at that, all right, how are the banks gonna do overall? We had one strong winner and one loser today. Bank of America as well is going to be one to keep on watch going forward. Wells Fargo, is it any surprise? I don't know if there's anybody out there that's watched Netflix, dirty money on Wells Fargo, but to me, it's no surprise that they weren't in the healthiest condition. All right, my final stock chart of stocks that I'm watching today. Oops, not the SPY, sorry, that's my second to last one. But the SPY, in general, we went up here, we tested a double top. We have a bit of an ascending triangle. So if we go ahead and we break this 323, I think we're gonna be looking at future highs for the market, having it run up into November. When we look at it on seasonality, we had a very strong July over the past 20 years. When we go forward and we're looking at last year, what happened historically last year? We had a 1.99 percent gain in six days. That was from July 19th, uh, excuse me, July 9th to July 15th. So this week could surge. However, that was also in relation to the bank's earnings. So it might be different this year, but on average, it tends to be fairly bullish. Last one, Tesla. We've got Ford that's trading at $6 and we have Tesla that's trading at $1,800 just yesterday. There's a huge disparity. The big thing with Tesla was all those shorts that got stubborn. Right back here, when we tested 960, we heard about a hedge fund that went out of business. Why? Their ego was so big, they did not want to cover. They were looking at the fundamentals of the company. Hey, this company is in debt. They don't have any customer service. They can't provide any um, parts because they're so busy with production. Well, the shorts kept getting stubborn and stubborn and stubborn. We broke 1,000, went up 80% from there. That's pretty much unheard of for a $1,000 stock. So looking on this one to potentially pull back to that $1,200 mark, to that 200 simple moving average on the hourly, might be a nice area at which to go ahead and go long. Again, thank you guys for joining me. If you have any questions, you can always reach me at jane at cjntrade.com. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.